I think a lot of times, um, because our society is sort of trapped uh, in this um, this complicated and clear stuff, that when we when we actually go in to do complex work like we're doing here, um, and actually what I just heard in the softgov call, for example, is all about what governing constraints can we put on here as opposed to enabling constraints. And I think what a lot of times the role of the artist is to do is to say, hey, you know, um, I'm giving you a way back. So governing constraint only goes in the direction of this arrow, whereas an enabling constraint creates a bi-directional pathway from this uh, complicated stuff that's knowable but not familiar back into the complex, which is kind of the realm of the artist. And the realm of the artist might even be back into the chaotic, if you know what I mean. Uh, because I was kind of, I'm also part of another group which is called Motion DAO, which is on another chain. But then, uh, basically, what I learned about it and like participating in the weekly talks is that it works around ethics. And I participated in doing some graphic design for the Consilience Library project. I think this project is a lot about like one thing is like a regenerative workflow so it's a lot about learning how to develop tools which can be applied for crypto economics uh, about the ethical aspect and they're kind of thinking a lot about the crypto economic flower which is kind of coming out of a paper called the foundations of crypto economy and uh, what I learned from it is kind of it's uh, an ecosystem with like a very diverse base of participants and a lot of persons like this initiative is kind of starting up kind of like initiatives within this ecosystem and specifically the library is kind of thinking about how to invite a, a subject matter experts to contribute so that's kind of my understanding from it but probably if you ask someone else they will have a different understanding but i think that's a bit also how the project is that's quite interesting how far really also building some regenerative ecosystem of ecosystems of cause like that. Um, but during the whole process we then also decided hey um, we actually want to test some assumptions and some some innovation that are do do some things very differently and that we uh, feel need really change uh, other else we will be doing business as usual no matter what the technological innovations are so there are some current research going on into regenerative workflows how do we connect across time zones uh, you know this tra transdisciplinary means people have different backgrounds use different tools and processes, have different working styles in any case, <laughs> come from different cultures. So how do we honor this diversity without making everything uh, adhere to one process, one thing, one way of delivery? And that's also right. what we, uh, as mentioned, test with uh, how we go about putting together the Consilience Library. So today it should be really only about Consilience Library <laughs> because uh, what Omega is can be quite uh, big and or, or, or it's, it's a question into also self-inquiry, self-organization, what it means for the individual and the collective and as mentioned all of the topics of ethics. Yeah, oh, you really, know, um, if, you, if you put your... Bullshit your yeah your your site on the omega text uh, group working group oh, yeah, just mm -hmm. the yeah. Group. <laughs> yeah and you know what steph says is is basically my understanding too is like the first major project is is the library but like you know within that project there's research projects and then what what i'm doing on my own is like creating my own uh research project into like basically it's like the importance of like creativity when you're when you're in a group especially when you want to bring a project um, into like reality you know from like the idea stage into 
working it out until like now now you got something whether it's content or a working model for for your app or whatever like the process of working in conjunction with um like i uh, for my main contention is that within the process of working on a project especially too if you got people that care and you have someone that's creative then your messaging your artwork your media all comes organically from from that and and like i'm doing my proof of concept of like everything that i'm producing right now like i'm making these video edits that are collective um the way i'm trying to write is collective and bringing in multiple people and this is this is like what i believe later is like how you you see these uh projects that that are more than just projects but they're also these ecosystems that could uh tie up but it's like it starts from little seeds of ideas these little groups and then them somehow you know just being in touch with each other and and sinking in in the larger context of like DAOs and then other DAOs and stuff like that so I was gonna say that <laughs> yeah oh uh, you know the, the, those kind of I wanna really incentivize communities like here hey become a DAO come on like there is one really cool one here in Hamburg. Like they rescued some part of the city, like the oldest one in the middle, and they become like some co-op, like since 20, 30 years. And artists actually residency uh, via residency, they also you know renovate there and events funding those renovation, like regenerating the neighborhood also. Like from its history to everything, um, I really want this uh, stateful art really um, creating that exchanges between artists and people. Invite them. They create like um, another thing is hey, uh, increasing mobility of uh, them would help uh, on that. Like uh, they can. Uh, I just feel like for in general like reducing over uh, making uh, reducing over production we need to know more about demand and if that's like uh, there and people can observe that like there are a lot of stuff happening because of an amb- uh, ambiguity like hey not known or not planned or you know what schedule kind of and i i think that would help some give some context especially on residencies i wanna um really find out if that's uh, some just some uh, you know who who decides you know like who is staying there or how so those those gotta be something that uh, complemented like having multiple versions like coffee shop selection kind of after art directions uh, it goes like multi-tab and content below hey community curates I love it I really like I found some convenience in blockchain and creating their own economy rewarding the right one but I'm gonna need knowledge on tokenization more because we are gonna mint those genre tokens and also the platform token start then i can do it quickly but i wanna make it good yeah and yeah like stuff you know i wanna share it like make sure that artists are actually uh governing so to say or people inviting artists not only defining some event everything decided yeah. they want it's like really um possible um, yeah for sure it'd be cool like and i think and yeah i love tech you know you know what's it's kind of interesting this kind of in a, in a in a way ties into what what jolly uh, llama was talking about of like it you know this buddy system of you know part of onboarding you know is like you, you do you look into your 
for yourself of like what dolls and what you're doing but like when you have like a friend that helps you a buddy system that it, it helps like scale up and scaffold up trust like just like this instant kind of like trust and then like that's kind of my idea in the broader sense of the nft redux it's like a simple way to be like okay we're cool in the sense that like we like we we work in this creative commons way we work for like the commons but you know we're open to to learn and like share our share our stuff with with other people like what you know with this, this understanding that we're all growing and learning together but like what helps that is uh with, with jolly llama woods and then we have this symbol that we're starting off with at the stargate and it's just like a like a simple way to just like frame it in a different way to make it a little bit more fun a little bit more exciting and um but it's a way to to start to um work at these these other little front-end design decisions in a collaborative way like with with people's input but like meaningful input not just like everybody like a bunch of noise and so like that part is like pretty interesting to me and i've been like doing some stuff with my other friend from this other group uh team human but anyways uh it's called M um, uh, mandala narrative research and it's it's kind of about that like okay you do these mind mappings of like say yourself but then later when projects you do the mind mapping of the project and then like later you find out oh like there's a lot of overlapping of like skill sets but there's also like things that complement each other and like that's just like good for me to know but it's also like good for like everybody to know but like in in a in a way that's like coherent and in a way that has like a guide to like anybody who's really curious about that could use that and really if you learn it from my understanding of that especially the, the narrative mandala like <clears throat> that's how you in one sense design this stuff ethically because then just in the framework it's like baked in to have a dynamic uh a system of like okay there's like these different type not types of people but there's like fluid <laughs> neurodiversity and other different ways to look at it that actually complement each other if you if you know how to like weave the narrative in a sense it's like a um, very new stuff i'm getting into but um there's this one technique that i'm trying to learn that it's about how using the the mind maps and it's like a rotating thing um, <clears throat> but it's it's kind of interesting. Later, I'll, I'll share more of that when I get it down to being able to like show it. <laughs> I just could just tell you about the concept right now. Yeah, and and um, the difficulty, or as mentioned, like you really want to take care that you don't end up with just having ethical committees <laughs> and outsource all of that to experts but uh, it's all about participation right um, and enabling people uh, and enabling informed participation of course we're talking engineers anyways that we need to share as much uh, knowledge that we have so that we have more and more people actually being able to help uh, token projects um, but also again one more thing that has been really recognized or differentiated in Omega I would say is that we acknowledge not just the token engineering or the engineering heavy uh, domain um, of all crypto economics and, and token engineering but also uh, what people <laughs> uh, call humanities but actually those are equally important domains and, and um, backgrounds that we need in, in token engineering or crypto economics. Um, philosophy, ethics, law, <laughs> right? But uh, also uh, political uh, economy, uh, decision science, psychology. Um, I don't know if, if you people are familiar with the crypto economics flower. Uh, this is what you take to orient here 